weeks. This is the uh, last uh, session of the class before the Christmas break. Um, and uh, if Christmas isn't enough for everybody to look forward to something, uh, the, uh, let me tell you immediately before I forget the date of the next class is uh, uh, on the 13th of January, the 13th of January. Uh, so there we go. There's something to look forward to. And, uh, and here we are now, last class, with our good friend Achan Barry Supato with us. And without more ado, please lead the class, Barry. Thank you, Colin. I'll just do a short introductory chant, uh, paying respects to the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. Namu tasa bhagavatu aratu sama sambuddhasa. Namu tasa bhagavatu aratu sama sambuddhasa. Namu tasa bhagavatu aratu sama sambuddhasa. Buddham danam sangham namasami. I'd like to welcome everybody. For those of you who haven't uh, sat with me before. Um, what I normally do is uh, a guided sweeping meditation. I, I probably do get two periods, maybe 20 minutes or so, two periods of 20 minutes. Um, guided sweeping meditation on the first period and then a lighter, uh, as in not saying so much on the second period, but more reminders just to uh, just to be aware and catch catch ourselves when our mind starts to uh, do what minds do, which is wander around the universe and uh, try and put everything right or whatever. My emphasis is generally always the same. Having for the last however many many years that I can think of, is mindfulness. But I'm not talking about self consciousness, which is often considered to be mindfulness. I I am doing this. I am walking slowly. I am brushing my teeth. But no, when we are present in, in, in the moment, there is an opportunity to see how our mind, how our heart mind truly is. And it is at peace. It is always at peace if we let go of our views and opinions our conditioning but as i always say we cannot let go it's not possible because we're so biased how could we possibly fix the problem with the problem how could we fix samsara with samsara but by being present by noticing how the heart mind is truly in that moment, there is an automatic letting go. There has to be a letting go if we are really aware of that place of peace, that place of true awareness or pure awareness, that bare attention. That awareness, call it what you will, it all comes down to the same thing. Just, so to speak, stopping. Stopping, pulling a link out of the chain of our conditioning. It only lasts for a, a fraction of a second. But the more we look, the more we notice this place, the more normal that becomes until eventually it becomes our default place. We naturally start to live from that place, which is, it might sound, because it's, uh, we talk about there's a stopping, there's a letting go, a natural letting go. It might sound 
well, a bit dumb, a bit stupid, really. You know, I, I'm just, well, you know, I mean, we're so used to trying to control the world. We're so used to trying to become something else, to get something else, to get away from things that we see it's entrenched. Our thoughts are entrenched in, I need to sort things out. I need to control the world. But finding that place that our intuitive side, so to speak, finding that, living from that, we start to discover that we don't need to try and control the world, to try and fix everything, to try and get things to make me happy. We are naturally happy. We are naturally content. But, some, but we, have to, we have to prove this to ourselves, as in getting, getting to know it. Otherwise, well, you know, I mean, just um, how, can I, how can I exist? How can I live my life if I, if I just come from that place of, of pure awareness? As I say, we need to, to experience it. Nobody can tell us. Nobody can tell us what this stopping is like. Nobody can tell us what this no self is like. Nobody can tell us what it is to see, to know the cessation of suffering. But we can experience it. If we only sort of persevere, not in terms of becoming or getting something, but for its own sake, just to notice. Just to notice that quietness, that place. Again, I'll say that it's not silly, it's not stupid. It's fully aware. It understands, it knows, but it can't be grasped because it is no thing. It is awareness, but it's not a thing. It's not a thing that we can grasp or tamper with or try and improve or hold on to. We can only remember just to come back, just to notice. Say I do this uh, <clears throat> guided sweeping meditation through the body with the breath or the sound of silence. But it is not about the body or the breath or the sound of silence. It's just using that to shift our attention. And in that moment, there's a stopping. Because if we don't project, if I say, be aware of the forehead or the eyebrows or the fingernails, well, we can't. We can't be truly aware of it without projecting a picture onto it. So there is the opportunity just to be aware just to notice, just to notice that place of true contentment, that place where the search comes to an end. As I say, maybe for a short time, but the more we practice in this way, the more natural, the more normal it becomes. So if we sit in a posture that uh, allows us or the, to, to, uh, to be aware, I talk in ideals here and not every, uh, everybody can achieve this idea. And it, in, in a, it doesn't really matter. Awareness is awareness, whether you're doubled over running down the street or sitting on a cushion, you can be aware at any time. So, you know, in a posture that perhaps helps. And just noticing, just being aware of the body from the tips of the toes to the top of the head. Not, as I say, not projecting, not putting pictures onto it.
but just noticing that quiet, peaceful place that is fully aware. So noticing sensations in the body, not commenting, just being aware of them. Noticing the breath, not following the breath, just being aware of the natural breathing process. Listening, listening to the sound of silence, listening to silence, just listen intently, not to outside sounds, external sounds, but listen to, listen to that stopping. becoming aware of the top of the head. As I say, it doesn't matter if you're not aware of the top of the head, but you can be aware of that place where the mind stops in awareness. So becoming aware of the back of the head and the sides of the head. Noticing, just noticing how the mind stops around. So becoming aware of the ears. And the forehead. And the eyebrows. And the eyelashes. What happens when you Point your attention at the eyelashes. The mind can only stop if you don't project a picture onto them. Stop within that awareness. Becoming with the eyes. And the nose and the nostrils. Becoming aware of the, the lips and the mouth and the tongue. And 
and the chin and the jaw and the cheeks of the face. Now being aware of the whole of the face and the head, not thinking, not judging, just noticing that peaceful mind that's fully aware. Now letting that awareness spread down to the neck, right around the neck and the throat. And the shoulders, just being aware of the shoulders, not commenting, judging, or altering if there is discomfort, just being aware of the way it is. Letting that awareness spread down the arms from the shoulders to the elbows, the sides of the arms, the back of the arms, the front of the arms. And the forearms from the elbows down to the wrists. Just being aware from that place of awareness, not projecting. Now becoming aware of the hands from the wrists down, the palms of the hands, the thumbs, the fingers, the joints of the fingers, the tips of the fingers. Becoming aware of the back of the hands, the knuckles, the sides of the hands, the fingers, the joints of the fingers, the tips of the fingers, and the fingernails.
Now bringing into your awareness your hands, your arms, your shoulders, the neck, the head and the face. Not going out to these parts, but just noticing how the mind is when there is true awareness. Now becoming aware of your back, from the shoulders, down the back, through the shoulder blades, the sides of the trunk. Down the spine, the arch of the back, the small of the back. Coming where the buttocks and the hips, no commenting, no judging, just awareness. Now becoming aware of the chest, the lungs, the sides of the trunk, the diaphragm, the belly, the navel, intestines, the groin, and the hips. Now bring into your awareness your the whole of the trunk of the body, the back and the front, the hands, the arms, the shoulders, the neck, the face and the head. And just noticing how is the heart, how is the heart mind when there is awareness
Now becoming aware of your legs from the hips down to the knees, the top of the legs, the back of the legs, the sides of the legs. Just noticing, just being aware, nothing more. Being aware from that place of true mindfulness, true awareness, of true bare attention. Letting that awareness spread down from the knees down to the ankles. from the ankles down the feet, the soles of the feet, the heels of the feet, the arches of the feet, the balls of the feet, the toes, the tips of the toes. And the top of the feet, the sides of the feet, the toes, the joints of the toes, the tips of the toes, and the toenails. What happens to your mind when you are aware or place your attention towards the toenails? Mind can only stop in awareness if I don't project a picture onto them. Now bringing into your awareness the whole of the body from the tip of the toes to the top of the head. Just be in that place of awareness. There's nothing to think about. There's nothing to gain or get or become. Are becoming aware of the breath, just the gentle breathing, not following the breath in the nose, nostrils, or in the throat, or in the rise and fall of the stomach or the lungs. Just the gentle breathing.
listening, listening to hear the sound of silence. Just that sound of no thing. But most importantly, notice how the mind, how the heart mind is in that very moment of awareness. So stretching your limbs if, if needs be, but always keeping in mind that we use the word meditation, but we just oftentimes think that meditation is sitting on a cushion or, or on a chair in a certain posture. There is never not an opportunity to be meditating. Whether we're cooking, watching the television, cleaning our teeth, working, everything, we can be aware this is meditation. And the more we, we bring this into our ordinary everyday life, this is where the true practice is done. Because this meditation we, we do like this, it's really great at building a foundation of reminding ourselves or, or rediscovering that place of awareness. But actually bringing it into our life as in the actual path. Noticing, knowing that cessation of suffering. When we are present, when we are aware from that place of awareness, of awareness, there is a cessation of suffering. Because there's nobody actually there. So bringing that into our ordinary everyday actions. Of course, sometimes it's, uh, it's tricky. Because as I said earlier on, we're not, we're used to uh, trying to control the world, trying to become something, trying to get things to, to make ourselves happier, as in relationship, cars, whatever, any, any, or uh, even trying to become enlightened, trying to get away from things. Instead of looking them right in the eyes, which involves not commenting, not judging, not trying to control, but just looking at them from that place of awareness. This isn't about repression or suppression or uh, dulling out in some place of quiet, of quietness. It's about awareness. It's very active. But it's not me doing it. It is a natural state. And this doesn't exclude thinking. Because in the Theravada tradition, they say um, 
you come to the silent thinker. It's not this neurotic thinking process we normally have of one thought leads to another endlessly, endlessly. It's about balancing, balancing our intellect with our intuitive side, so to speak. So we'll sit again another period. I'll give the occasional reminder. Experiment, use, you know, I've given this uh, a fairly quick guided sweeping meditation, but find a place that suits you. It could be the hands, the feet, the breath, the sound of silence, any part, because awareness is awareness. And every time we are in the present moment, there is that opportunity just to notice, just to be, just to be that awareness, just to be a human being, being human. Okay. So just remembering that's all we can actually do is to remember to come back and notice, not notice in an intellectual way, in an, analytic, in an analytical way, but just noticing from that place of bare attention.
So being with whatever particular place is easiest for you to, to so-called anchor the mind to, it might change. So shift to another place. Look at the breath. Listen to the sound of silence. Experiment, but not in a grasping way, not in a way to become better at it, but just see what gives you the opportunity to find that, to discover that place of, of no thing, of knowing that can't be grasped. So just noticing when the mind wanders, coming back with true metta, with true loving kindness, not scolding yourself, not saying, getting frustrated, just returning, returning to the present moment, noticing.
So just remember, remember to return to that place of awareness using the body or the breath of the sounds, sound of silence. If the body becomes uncomfortable, I'd recommend that you look at that discomfort so as to respond to it and then move your posture instead of just reacting as we normally do in life. But just spend a, a minute or half a minute with that feeling without grasping or get trying to get rid of it and then move
just remembering, remembering to come back, come back to that awareness. So still being aware, the body is always here, it can't lie. The mind uh, will generally, Mara will generally try and trick us into uh, believing or not believing, attaching or not attaching. But just return to that place of awareness, that place of, of knowing that can't be grasped because it's no thing. Yet it is where it is like space. It contains everything. In the scriptures it says, mindfulness is the path to the deathless. Heedlessness is the path to death. And that's pretty strong stuff, isn't it? But if we are truly mindful, there is deathless. There cannot be death in this moment. There cannot be the death of awareness. Of course, bodies will perish. 
over time. But there is no time. There is only now. And there is only now to practice being aware. To practice, to study the Dharma, study the teachings, but from that place of awareness, because we tend to even uh, attach to the teachings. The Buddha said this, or that great, great teacher said that, and we attach to these words, but they're not ours. They're not from our understanding. We know all we need to know if we can only start to live from the present moment. Of course, the bind, you know, as I said before, there's nothing wrong with thinking. But, or it's, as it said, is the greatest tool human beings have, is the thinking process. But it is the most terrible master because we've completely uh, been subjugated by our intellect. So we no longer really know the intuitive mind, so to speak. That's the word that I'm calling the intuitive um, because I can't think of another word because it is nothing. It is no thing yet. It understands, it knows all things. This isn't about getting or gaining, it's about awakening. Awakening to the way it is. But still, even through the the, uh, the finest teachings, we try and grasp these teachings, we try and become these teachings, we try to do these teachings. But if we allow ourselves in just a small way initially to awaken, to be in the way it is, these teachings blossom, those seeds of the Dhamma germinate and blossom into reality, not into some special, uh, special super being, but into true humanity, true loving kindness, true compassion, true equanimity. into the Eightfold Path using that uh, teaching to right thought, right speech, right view, right speech, right understanding, etc., etc. We can't do these things. On one level, yes, it's good. It's good to, to attempt this. But we actually can't do them, but we can be them. They are the outcomes of, so we truly live the Dhamma, not just thinking about it, but we truly become that. But we need to apply ourselves in a way, not to get or gain, but just to remember while we're working, while we're walking, just to come back just to notice that from that place of awareness, we can, we can see, we can hear, we can talk, we can do anything. But it's from that place of awareness, not from our neurotic addiction to this idea of a separate self we have. Does anybody have any <clears throat> questions or criticisms or queries or things that are uh, not quite clear, please, please do ask them if you do have. Wong Du, could you please unmute everybody?
so that if anybody wants to actually ask a question, do so. Or if anybody would prefer, please send a message through by chat and I'll put one on the chat box, Wong do as well. And uh, we, can, we can relay anything in chat onto Achan Barry. So please ask any questions that you want. Know. If you do have any questions, it's it's very helpful to not just yourselves, but to uh, everybody, because we're all basically going through the same thing. Maybe uh, slightly a different conditioning, but through that, uh, what we call our human condition, which probably isn't that human, it's just uh, this mind created illusion that we are human so no chats i i did look at a couple of but they didn't say anything i haven't seen anything no okay jude yeah hi there jude hi um, i was just Wondering, you know, when you said you can't do some of these things, but you can be these things, do you think that's the same with um, beginner's mind, retaining a beginner's mind? I was going to say, ask you if you thought there was any ways in which we can remain fresh and coming at this like beginners with the kind of enthusiasm and the fervour and the openness mm. of a beginner um, but is that something we can do or do you think the practice actually allows you to be a beginner? I think if we're truly practicing, if we're truly aware in the present moment, it's the outcome of. I, I don't think we can do these things. Mm. You know, on, on one level, yes, OK, it's OK. But really, I, I consider Buddhism, which is what I know best, if not that well, to be about awakening, not about being a Buddhist. Yeah, great to be a Buddhist. But I don't think the Buddha was talking about us being Buddhas. He was talking about awakening. And, and then we are those things. Mm. Yeah. No. Thank you. My pleasure. Does awareness in the mind come from a separate place? I only know awareness. I don't know separate places. So I only know that uh, when there is uh, a genuine letting go by being present, there is just awareness which can respond. Well, I, I don't know. It's just not coming from a place of our conditioning, whether you call that a separate place. I don't think it is a separate place. It's just uh, a genuine letting go of our views and opinions, our, our conditioning. So I don't know if that uh, makes any sense to that. Uh, I think it was Yvonne or someone. Oh, I, I got a, a, a chat for you, uh, Achan Barry. Yes, please do. It's, uh, it's from June. And she's asking, <clears throat> please can I ask Achan to talk some more about the sound of silence?
It's a very, um, <clears throat> I mean, I know it basically from uh, Lumpur Samedo, who uh, um, has used and used to, uh, I think, talk about it more uh, in the past. I, I don't think he talks about it so much nowadays. Um, but, but it's my favorite, uh, to put it that way, favorite um, practice. And that's just listening. You know, if you listen now, maybe, maybe there's a, you can call what you're listening to the sound of silence. I can't tell you what it is because it's different for everybody. But it's very, very useful because it anchors the mind. When you're listening to that, and I'm listening to it now, whilst talking, there is much less chance of me being carried away by my conditioning, my ideas or views and opinions. So I personally find it a very useful practice. Just listening. I can't tell you what it is, but just listen. But whilst listening, notice that you can hear, you can hear what I'm saying. You can see from that place. But as I say, it is sort of anchoring the mind. It's anchoring us from doing our uh, trips around the universe. There's a letting go whilst listening to that. But again, you know, also, <clears throat> I think it's using any part, using's not the best word, being aware of any part of the body or the breath is equal because awareness is awareness. And if we are aware of our true state whilst being with the feet or the hands or a part of the body or the breath, listening right now, right now, because as he, this is just, um, it's easy to say, but it's also a very good uh, tool. There is only now. Everything is subject to change. So there can only be now. The future hasn't come and the past is gone. So when do we practice? We practice right now. And once we really start to, to look at that, that helps us, you know, uh, uh, so, oh, oh, I have, you know, I've forgotten all day long. I've forgotten to be aware, to be mindful. Oh, for last, for the week, there is only now. This is what Jude was referring to, I think. Beginner's mind. Right now, we're always beginning. We're always beginning right now because there is only now. And, you know, logically, that's the case. So using these things, getting to know, getting to, to see the results of being in the right, right now because the never was anything but now and never ever will be anything but now only now looking from that place
Are there any more chats there, Colin? Nothing yet. <laughs> but please, everybody, feel free to, uh, uh, to, to send something through that chat or... of January and I just want to take this opportunity of uh, thanking you all for coming particularly thanking Achan Barry for coming he, he we try and ask Achan Barry to come to take to take to lead to lead the last class in every month and he's kindly agreed to continue doing that in the new year so that's brilliant and I also want to thank Wong Du who's the Bodhisattva behind the scenes. Absolutely. Having the yeah. <laughs> Making sure that that happens. And I just want to wish everybody, all of us, all the best. I, I'm sure it's been a difficult year for quite a few people. It's another difficult year, you know, there's been illness and, and loss and all sorts of uh, frustrations from not being able to do what we want to do. And yet here we are coming up to uh, Christmas, which traditionally is a time of, you know, peace on earth, goodwill to everybody kindness, generosity, joy even. So uh, I was going to say it's a perfect time to practice mindfulness, but I'm going to say it's, it's a perfect a perfect time to uh, cultivate what Buddhists call metta, loving kindness, compassion, and carry it around to everybody, including ourselves, you know. It's a good time to uh, be kind to ourselves. And, you know, you don't have to max out your credit card when you're doing that either. So as I say, uh, we begin again on the 13th of January and thank you and all the very best for Christmas and New Year from, from me. Do take care, look after yourselves, stay happy, healthy, peace and have a peaceful New Year. Barry, do thank you want you. to say anything? Well, I... thank, thank you, Colin, for that. Yeah. And uh, I really wish everybody uh, a mindful, festive season. As so I say, there, there is never not an opportunity to be aware. Um, and please, you know, it's the rewards on actually practicing in the present moment and getting to know that place are, as they say, the, the, the person who knows what he already has is wealthy beyond all his wildest dreams, beyond all their wildest dreams. And I think it's very true. So I can only wish you, wish you good practice and uh, just remember, remember to come back to the present moment and notice. Okay, take care, everyone. <laughs>